What is up everybody? My name's Kincaid and per request today I will be showing you how I lace dirt bike wheels. I'll be running you through everything you need to do the job as well as the techniques to get it done. I just finished Cerakoting the hubs for these wheels. These wheels are for the YZ300 I'm building. One of you will be winning this bike when it's complete. Also here's a very quick sneak peek of the next episode of this build series. You're not going to want to miss that. If you would like a chance to win this bike when it's finished, you can tap or click the link on screen or in the description to get yourself entered. Without further ado, let's build some wheels. Of course, these wheels are already disassembled. So if you're at the stage where you have a wheel that still looks like this, you have two options to take it apart. My preferred option involves a big old bolt cutters, and I simply snip all of the spokes to pull the hub out and reuse the hub and possibly the rim if the rim's in good shape. For this bike, the front rim was pretty toast, and I'm going down to an 18 inch on the rear, so I opted for some new tusk rims. So that said, you can either cut all of the spokes and get new ones, or you can disassemble the wheel. To disassemble the wheel, you would need a spoke wrench, and to make it a little quicker, whatever tool the spoke nipples accept. In this case, it's a Phillips. A lot of times, it's a flat blade or an Allen. Lots of times on old wheels, the biggest issue is that the spokes are seized, which makes it very difficult to get them apart. This is why oftentimes I choose to replace spokes and nipples. That said, if your spokes aren't that old and they're not seized, or you simply wanna save the money from buying new spokes, go ahead and disassemble your wheel. If you're having issues with seized spokes, one of these will be your friend. You can clamp it onto two spokes at once like so, which will generally help prevent the spoke from spinning while you're trying to remove it. Take note that it's not unusual for wheels to have two different size spokes. In this case for the rear, I've got disc side and sprocket side. So when you're disassembling the wheel, take care to sort the spokes and where they came from. In general, if I'm taking apart a wheel and I don't know for sure if it's different size spokes, first of all, you can check the OEM parts diagram. But what I generally like to do is sort the spokes into four categories which side they came from, and if they were inner or outer on the hub. In this scenario, that would be inner and that would be outer. So the tools required for both removing and installing bearings are the same. A torch is very convenient and really, really helps bearings go both out and in. You'll either want a hammer and a tap or a bearing driver kit. I've been using this method for a very long time and it has served me well. For some wheels, the hubs will have a circlip, in which case you'll need a set of snap ring pliers. And just to touch on the tools required for the rest of the job, you'll want a couple blocks of wood. An inch and a half in one dimension is generally pretty ideal. Of course, a spoke wrench or a spoke torque wrench. You will want a truing stand. Can this be done without one? Yes. Is it worth it? Not really. They're really not that expensive and it's really difficult to get a wheel fully true without a truing stand. If you're to the point where you want to lace your own wheels, I'd make sure to buy one of these. You'll also want to get some anti-seize lubricant. For a long time, I just use standard grease. One bottle of anti-seize is going to last you forever and you'll thank yourself later if you ever disassemble the wheels. A couple different colors of tape can also be useful when truing. I will get into the details of that later, but the next step right now is to install the wheel bearings. For most truing stands, the bearings need to be installed in the hub for the truing stand to work. If you're installing new bearings, it's important to put them in the freezer. I've got mine freezing right here next to my uh, breaded mushrooms. Torching the hub causes the aluminum to expand and freezing the bearing causes the bearing to contract, making it much easier to get new bearings installed. I'm going to start with the rear wheel bearings here. Big thanks to ProX for supporting this build. I'm just gonna torch this hub a bit to expand it. Nothing too significant, maybe just 30 to 45 seconds going around in an even motion. Careful when you touch it, it's going to be hot. I'm gonna put a shirt under this just because this is freshly Cerakoted. If your hubs are coated, you wanna make sure you don't chip them when you start beating on them. Okay, so I'm just going to take this frozen bearing and drop it in. And that one, because the bearing was frozen and the hub expanded right, just dropped right in. As soon as this goes back to a normal temperature, that bearing is gonna be rock solid in there. It doesn't always happen like that, but if it does, consider it a good thing. I've got a brand new seal here. I'm going to pack the inside of it with grease. Just try and get it nice and even. It doesn't need to be too excessive. And then that seal should just press right in. You can give it a little palm action. We'll usually get it done. If the seal doesn't go in perfectly straight, you can use something like a tap or a socket to just apply nice, firm, even pressure on the side that's a little high. Now I've got that thing evened out. Now here's the part of installing bearings that's very easy to forget and a total pain when you do. Don't forget your spacer. I've done it countless times. So now just for comparison to last time, I'm not gonna heat this side of the hub and we'll see how this bearing goes. See, it makes its way in, but it doesn't go all the way because that extra little expansion is very helpful. 
So in this case, I've got a 32 millimeter socket. If you use a method like this, you always want to use the outer race and not the inner race of the bearing. So this socket perfectly covers the outer race there. I'm gonna take my hammer and apply nice, even pressure all the way around. Make sure the bearing's going in evenly. You can put more pressure on one side or the other if it's not. Once the bearing is seated, you will hear an audible sound difference. Now that's bottomed out. I could hear the sound change. This rear hub does use a circlip, so I'll go ahead and get that installed. Make sure that seat's nice and evenly, and then you can install the last seal. That one installed nice and easy. All right, your brand new wheel bearings and seals are installed. It is time to start lacing the wheel. This is the point where you want to lay out your couple blocks of wood, set your rim on top, and center the hub. At this point, you want to make sure you're organized and know which spokes are which. I'm starting with the disc side spokes for this rear wheel, and I've got the disc side of the hub facing up. I also like to lay out a little rag and get my anti-seize lubricant ready. Most modern dirt bike wheels have 36 spokes and follow the same pattern. Lacing spokes is pretty simple if you follow the pattern, and if you mess it up, it's a total pain. I've done it once. So essentially, every matching hole on the hub, for example, one, two, three, will align exactly four spokes apart on the rim. So between here and here, there will be three empty holes. I like to start with the nine inside spokes on one side and then move to the outside spokes. Because as this builds tension, it can actually get hard to cross the spokes over, especially with an 18 inch rear wheel, which I'll show you when we get there. But for now, I'm gonna start with the first nine spokes. I'm gonna coat the threads with a little bit of anti-seize here. I'm gonna start with one of the inner holes. And the only important thing here with the rim is to make sure you start with an upward facing hole. I just put a couple threads on at this point just to get it started. I'm gonna go into the next corresponding spot on this hub and this spoke is going to be four holes away from this one. So we'll count one, two, three empty ones onto the fourth. I'm gonna continue this pattern for the first nine. Okay, so my first nine spokes are installed, all four spokes apart. If you do it this way, you can see they're all clearly spaced evenly. And now I'm going to finish this side of the rim. The next set of spokes will go over the ones I already installed. Take note of that because it can be really easy to install a spoke and have it cross under the other one without thinking about the way it needs to be oriented. So you have to make sure that this spoke goes over this one and this one. It can get a little tricky where you need to flex the spoke a little bit. You can move the hub around a little bit. Do whatever you need, but make sure that the Z index of these is correct. They're also gonna alternate every four, so they're essentially just gonna go in between each of the nine I've already installed. So here is one side all laced up. First of all, how freaking fresh does this wheel look? Second of all, as you can see, I have barely threaded each of these nipples on. I just got a couple turns, and that is because it is much easier to install the rest of the spokes when all of these ones are loose. You'll see as I get into the last couple spokes on the other side, it can get pretty tricky to make sure that they go over each other properly. So we will go ahead and flip this over and get started on the sprocket side. Exact same concept as the other side. I'm gonna start with the nine inner spokes followed by the nine outer spokes. This is where you can see already you might have to fiddle with the hub. I'm already having to flex this spoke just a little bit to get it aligned. And that's because the rim is not perfectly centered on the hub. Technically the rim wants to be sitting like this, just a little bit higher than these blocks of wood. It's not essential to get it at the perfect height just for this initial lacing stage, but just be aware that it is normal for the spokes to not feel like they're aligning perfectly and you can fiddle with the hub or rim placement or flex the spoke just a little bit to get it to do what you need it to. Of course, if it's excessive, make sure that you've got your pattern right and everything's being laced correctly. So eight more to go on the inside. So just to quickly touch on this even further, you can see this spoke I'm installing right now is right to the point that it bends in the hub. So where it's aligned, I'm about a half inch low of the hole. I'm gonna flex it up just a little bit, get that nipple installed, and now it's not too hard 
to get that spoke through where it belongs and now all that tension is relieved. So that's normal. You are gonna have to do that a little bit, especially on a smaller wheel. Front wheels tend to be a little bit easier because the spokes are thinner and longer. The first nine on the sprocket side are installed. Time to get the last nine in. So as I've pointed out, in this scenario right here, this spoke naturally wants to go under this one. Now that I'm down to the last nine, the wheel's starting to get a little tighter. So here I can lift the hub a little bit, flex that spoke down a little bit, and then apply pressure on this one. As you can see, it does get pretty tight. Like I'm applying a reasonable amount of force here, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that as long as everything is in its correct spot. So you can see I'm sliding this one in. I'll get a couple threads on that nipple there. And then once you're to this point, generally, that'll pop on through. So this last nine is always gonna be the trickiest part, but just know as long as you've got the pattern correct and them overlapping in the right directions, you're on the right track. Also, generally not needed, but if you really start to struggle and say there's a lot of tension on this spoke, I can force this through with a lot of pressure on my thumb here, or if you're careful, you can also just give it a couple quick taps, and there that spoke goes through. All right, so at this point, your 36 spokes are loosely installed and your wheel is technically laced. By this point, it's probably about five o'clock and you should crack yourself a beer. I emailed Kettle House to see if they wanted to be a sponsor for the YZ build and they didn't respond to me. The next step from here is to tighten all the spokes evenly, but not too much to start. My general rule of thumb is to tighten each nipple to where the threads are no longer showing, and that is my starting point. Depending on the style of nipple, you can definitely do this with a drill or an impact. This is much easier if they're Allen or Phillips style, flat heads are kind of a pain. But I am just going to go around for every spoke until I'm just at the top of the threads. For this step, you do not need to worry about the order. You can just go around and tighten all 36. So I've got all 36 spokes loosely tightened now. I guess that's an oxymoron. As you can see, some of them are still quite loose. At this point, I'm going to start counting how many turns I do on each spoke. Tightening everything evenly to start gives you the best chance of the wheel being true right off the get-go and having minimal truing work. If you just snug them all down without paying attention, it might be a little bit quicker initially, but the truing part of the job will take longer. So now I'm gonna go around and do two full turns on every spoke nipple and see where that gets me. The goal is so that all of the slack like this is gone, giving us a nice, relatively snug starting point to put the wheel in the truing stand and actually torque the spokes and make sure it's true. This is the point that a piece of tape can be very useful, simply to choose a reference spoke. Now I know when I see the white tape, that is a full circle. I also wanna know while I'm doing these two turns all the way around, some of the spokes already are tensioned. When I go to turn and it's already tight to do a half turn, I just stop. If it spins too easily, I do two and no more. By the time you get all the way around the wheel, this will generally even itself out pretty well. Again, this is one of the early steps. We haven't even gotten to actually tightening and truing yet. Here's a great example. After two turns, this nipple was still loose. The one right next to it doesn't really wanna turn at all, so I'll give it a quarter turn and call it good. Now, for the most part, I've taken care of the wobble and loose spokes. You can definitely still see a couple heads popping out there, but it's tight enough that it's time to go in the truing stand. Insert the rod from the truing stand into the hub. Now I can pop it up into the stand. Now, if you have the tusk stand or a similar truing stand, this is probably very obvious, but it took me a really long time to find out. I'm only including this because if there's anyone like me, you're gonna go, oh my gosh, how did I not realize that? I wasn't really sure what these were for for a very long time. I used to just tighten them right there. These are meant to slide to the edge and tighten down, which keeps this centered and makes it really hard for this bar to accidentally fall off. And would you look at that? Time to true a wheel. Make sure that you're using the correct size on your spoke wrench to not strip nipples. Here I'm going to start at my locating nipple marked with the white tape. And this is where I'm going to start tightening every fourth nipple. So I'm gonna do half a turn. And then I'm gonna skip three, go to a fourth corresponding nipple and do half a turn. 
I'm gonna do that all the way around. Now if there's one like this that's still completely loose, I'm gonna tighten that quite a bit at this point to where it's initially tensioned, and then I'm gonna do that half turn. Essentially at this point, everything should have some tension on it, but doing it in fours, make sure that everything is tensioned evenly. Now I've done a full rotation, I'll go one more nipple over, do half a turn, that one's already pretty snug. Skip three, one, two, three, onto the fourth corresponding nipple, half a turn. Four, half a turn. So there's another full rotation, which means we've now done half the spoke. So I've gone those sets of four, those sets of four, onto this one, half turn. That one's already pretty snug, so I'm gonna stop at a quarter turn. One, two, three. Also gonna stop at a quarter turn. One, two, three. That one wasn't tight. So you follow this pattern. Essentially for the rest of the time until it's time for fine tuning. Okay, so I've now done one, two, three, all those sets of fours onto this final one. One, two, three, skip. You can think of it as skipping three. You can think of it as alternating on that side, whatever is easiest for your brain to process. So at this point in these early truing stages, you can give it a spin, see how you're doing. And as you can tell, we're really not that far off on this one. Definitely needs some work, but this is the benefit of making sure that you start to tighten evenly. So at this point, I continue to tighten every fourth nipple all the way around until you're through all 36, and I do that over and over again with less turns each time. So I just did all 36 with half a turn, I'm gonna do another set at half a turn, and then depending how tight it is, probably go down to a quarter turn, and once those nipples start to feel real nice and snug, that's when you're into those kind of final truing stages where it's time to figure out how to make that wheel perfectly true. Okay, so once you're to this point where all of the spokes are relatively tight and the wheel is pretty darn close to true, but this is the time to actually start the truing process. So I'm going to adjust this needle here. So you want to align it to where it only makes contact at a high point on the rim. So this is a really nice adjustment because it not only shows me where I need to go left and right, but also where the wheel's traveling up and down. Now the concept of truing a wheel is easy. Execution is a little harder. Essentially, if the wheel is pulling too far to the left in one spot, you're going to tighten the corresponding spokes on the right side. Essentially, all you're doing is micro adjusting spokes to move this rim to where you want it around the hub. This is where having multiple colors of tape can be helpful. So I'm going to stop the wheel right here where it's pulled too far left. And I'm going to put a piece of blue tape on the spoke right here for my reference point for that. As you can see there, I know this is the point where the rim is pulled farthest to the left. Okay, so right now I am directly opposite the side where it's dished out too far on the left. So if we say that that spoke is where it's the worst, I'm gonna tighten probably six spokes around that on this side. I'm, a, I'm going to do the ones directly across from that point the most significantly, although that's actually really tight already. This one is not, which makes a lot of sense. And that's how Turing works. Every spoke needs to have even tension. Okay, so I've tightened those two. To pull it even a little bit further, I'm gonna do the next four spokes on this side as well. And I would base how much I turn based off of their existing tension. See, this one is almost finger loose as well, so that one probably needs a full turn, or at least until I start to feel even tension to the other spokes. And there we go, yeah, about a full turn was what it wanted. So really, truing a wheel is just applying those concepts. So I'm making a video teaching you how to build and true a wheel. You gotta decide if my truing skills are up to standard. This is where I'm calling it done on this one. It's just about perfect with the slightest little bit of wobble. With this rear wheel all trued up, it's time to install a fresh rear sprocket with some brand new sprocket bolts from Fastmetric. Pre-locked tied in and ready to go. The rear wheel is dialed, time to get the front laced up. 
And would you look at that? Two gorgeous wheels for a YZ300. These wheels are ready for a fresh set of Shinko tires. If you found this video helpful and are looking forward to tackling lacing a set of wheels yourself, please leave me a like rating and consider subscribing to the channel. And again, if you want a chance to win this bike, don't forget to get yourself entered. God, these wheels are sexy.